Okay, hello. Um, right. In just over a month, I will be living and working in Germany as an intern. And the specifics of the job don't really matter because what I'll be doing in Germany is essentially what I'm doing here, courting the unfamiliar. When one knows where to buy the cheapest lunch and where to buy the best coffee, life can get quite dull and you begin to want to get lost and you begin to want something new. And that's certainly what happened to me. But the process of achieving this dream of mine of living in Germany as an intern has in no way been easy. But dreams are not meant to be easy. It is by their very nature as products of the imagination to be elusive and out of reach. So what I'm here to tell you today then is how to turn those beautiful abstractions into tangible realities. I want all of you to think of what it is you most want to achieve in your life. Everything you want to do, everywhere you want to go, and everything you want to be. Now imagine these dreams and ambitions as symbolized by a lighthouse on your horizon. Something brilliant and luminescent constantly in view to work towards as a guiding light to remind you of what it is you most badly want. And for you to be able to stand taller and reach further and grab this dream of yours, you're going to have to do it through the art of persistence. So, um, someone who inspires me to dream big is the composer Philip Glass. In order to finance his first opera, Einstein on the Beach, he worked variously as a cab driver, a furniture removal man, and a plumber in New York. The opera then went on a global tour of 35 performances, and every single one of them sold out to a full house. And then he was invited into the Metropolitan Opera, which is the largest opera house in America, with an audience capacity of 4,000 audience members, and it sold out twice. And yet, after all of this, Philip Glass landed in a debt for $100,000. And this is 1976 money, so that's huge. So here is a composer able to take his own opera all around the world 35 times and perform to a full house on every occasion, two of which in the most prestigious opera house of the Northern Hemisphere, and yet end up with a titanic financial deficit. Philip Glass then spent the next two years working as a cab driver while raising two kids, writing more and more music, until at the age of 41, he was able to live off the money earned from his music when he was given a commission to write his next opera. And in the intervening 40 years, Philip Glass has composed 12 symphonies, has published a library of albums for piano, orchestra, and song, has been nominated for three Academy Awards, and was awarded the National Medal of Arts from, from President Obama. So Philip Glass, has achieved all of this through his undefeatable persistence. And he is a constant reminder that dreams do not always need to be measured by the numbers and commas in a bank account. Dreams do not always need to be profitable. This internship in Germany won't earn me any profit because it's unpaid. But the first question a lot of people ask me is why my heart is so set on Germany? What's the particular appeal? And well, I have German heritage, but the other reason is because of this man. Tattooed next to Philip Glass's name, I have the initials of Christopher Isherwood who's a novelist I met when I was 19 during my gap year. It was in a shopping mall in Melbourne that I picked up a copy of his autobiography, Christopher and His Kind. And as I read it, I quickly realized that Mr. Isherwood and I had a lot in common. We were both quite melodramatic, we both had an appalling tendency to overthink things, and we both liked boys. But it was importantly, the most um, important aspect of our similarities was that we were both avid people watchers fascinated with the lives of others. And so it was these rather colorful escapades of the boy bars of Berlin that really captured my imagination. <laughs> And so Berlin became for me something of a pilgrimage city. I visited Berlin last September and it was everything I wanted it to be. Everything there is so grand and stylish and organized and neat and everything runs on time. It's all so quintessentially German and I loved it. So I decided then to embark on that lighthouse on my horizon that I wanted to live in Germany. And so for me to do this, I would need to get a job. So I started applying for internships, and I sent out perhaps 26 applications to companies in seven different cities in Germany, and I got a lot of no's. But every rejection only became a motivation to keep trying and to keep applying. Every no I received only became an accelerant to keep trying and to follow that lighthouse, to follow the path towards the dream of my horizon. And after 19 no's, I was finally given this one yes from the company in Cologne. And the two intensive Skype interviews that followed were overshadowed by my genuine enthusiasm for this opportunity to live and work in Germany. Every answer I gave them always came back to my enthusiasm to follow this dream of mine. So when you are thinking of what it is you want to dream, this dream big opportunity of yours, I would urge you to break your journey down into three steps. See it, dream it, grab it. Know what it is you want and have it clearly in view as a guiding light to motivate you and to have that path in view. Keep dreaming about it and keep having that view on your horizon. And then through the art of persistence, when you are able to stand taller and reach further, it is then that you will be able to grab that dream of yours and it is then that you'll be rewarded with the product of your persistence. Dankeschön. <laughs>